I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my God. Hi, welcome back to part, what is this, four, five, I don't know, of the uh, 9E21 chassis from Zenith. Making good progress on recapping it. Um, incredible number of capacitors <laughs> in this radio needed, they all needed replacing, but or all the all the Moxie paper caps did. <clears throat> but I mentioned in the last video that there was supposed to be a shielded capacitor in here and I found it so I thought I'd share that with you and the capacitor in question is this guy right here with the bulging top let me get you a little closer I already, I already taken this lead off the, the uh, volume control, the volume potentiometer. Um, I was beginning, I'd gone all this way and not found it yet, and was beginning to think that there wasn't really one in here, till I noticed as I was unsoldering this lead right here on the um, what is that? The 6T8. So unsoldering the lead right there, then I realized another lead is creeping its way out from under the capacitor right here and going to ground. So the only reason to have a three lead capacitor in this kind of a configuration is a shielded capacitor. So that's that guy right there. So uh, give me a minute, I'll get it out of there and we'll take a closer look. Okay, here's our cap. Um, it's a Zenith made, uh, 0.01 microfarad, 400 volts, with a Zenith patent, and some text around there I can't quite read. I'll show you a trick that sometimes helps you read caps where the wax is deteriorated. And just heat it up with a flame. It becomes a little bit more transparent sometimes. or a little worse other time. Side. Foil side. So right there it says foil side. Um, which a lot of roller caps um, did. And in essence, that means the outside wrapping of the cap. So the only thing I can read there for sure is foil side. Yeah. It's something side foil. Um, so, how do we know it's a shielded cap? <coughs> it has a braided wire coming out from under the, the outside covering. And what's in there, I think, we might take this one apart to see, is a, um, is a layer of, might be a layer of aluminum, foil. This is adhesive backed aluminum foil tape. Um, and when I replace this, this is the stuff I'll use to uh, recreate uh, the shield. Um, so I'll take this apart and we'll, we'll take a look at the inside and see what, see what it's, how it's constructed. Um, the question is, why do you need a shielded capacitor? 
And the answer is, if a capacitor is within very short range of high frequency signals, and recall that this is an FM radio, so it's getting into the hundreds of megahertz. Um, so if a capacitor is near uh, the source of high frequency, uh, the, the noise from the high frequency will actually make its way into the cap and change the capacitance a little bit. Um, at the frequency that's leaking into it. So if you wrap some conductor around the outside of the cap and ground that conductor, you're in essence making a cage, uh, which the, the uh, high frequency radiation from other components won't pierce. It'll just hit the, hit the cork conductor and go to ground. Um, so that's the why of it. Let's take it apart here. I'll just cut it with an X-Acto knife and we'll take a look inside. Okay, here's what you might expect to see in there. And that's our shield right there. And this is attached to that shield. That mark right there is the one I just made with the um, X-Acto knife. So that would normally be there, but there's the, there's the, uh, where they wrapped. It's the end of the into the piece right there. So it's a pretty heavy piece of aluminum. And there's our conductor. Now, is that aluminum? I'm not so sure. This is soldered. The uh, braided wire is soldered on there. So that might be... <laughs> what this might be, boys and girls, is actual tin foil. A lot of us call aluminum foil tin foil because we grew up hearing about tin foil. Um, but most of us have never seen actual tin foil. The deal with tin foil is you can solder it. You can't solder aluminum. Um, there's probably some chemical way to, to figure out what it is, but I don't know what that is. So it's a regular capacitor with a piece of metal foil. How's that? Uh, wrapped around it to shield shield the plates in the in the capacitor from uh, stray radiation getting in there from other components. Here is our replacement capacitor, quite a bit smaller, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this tape to uh, wrap around it twice because um, this has an adhesive on the bottom side, and uh, so I need to sandwich a wire between two pieces of bare aluminum in order to make the shield. So I'll put that together and we'll take a look at it. All right, I cut a, <coughs> cut a piece of that aluminum tape um, the right width to go around there. Um, and I thought, well, it might be a good idea to make sure there isn't some sort of plasticized coating on this side um, and that it will conduct with whatever wire I can fit in between, so yeah, it's definitely just plain aluminum. That's good. So here's my idea. This is a, what is this, number 18 gauge, right? So number 18 gauge stranded wire. I've separated the strands um, a bit. I will lay the strands right there. Um, so first I'll start the tape around the capacitor. Um, then I'll lay the strands in place and wrap over those. If I can get the paper off the back of this. Stuff is hard to work on for me. There it is. I'll try 
try my best to align this with some precision. It's looking pretty good. And I'll lay this right there. Spread those out as much as reasonably can. I'll trim the ends off later. And I'll pinch it between the layers. And I'm going off a little bit here, but I think it'll be all right. Like that. I'll trim the excess off here. Now what I should have is conductivity. <coughs> Let me strip this first. Okay. What I should have is conductivity. The meter back. Between the end of the wire. and our homemade shield here. And I do. 0 0.3, 0 0.3 ohms, 0 0.2 ohms. It's not as solid a, a connection as I would have hoped, but it's as solid as I'm gonna get. I bet you can probably still buy shielded capacitors from somebody. Um, but I'm going to try this. If I find some noise that I can't pin down from somewhere, um, I may try something else. But there, we made a shielded capacitor. The old and the new. What I should have tried is putting that around. It has some dried up glue on it. I probably could have gotten that off and just wrapped this around it, cut it down a bit. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, we'll try this first. If it doesn't work, maybe I'll keep that and give that a shot. You know, I thought about this for 15 seconds and realized the approach is wrong in this regard. This is copper wire, and this is aluminum tape. And it has, as you saw, it has like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ohms of resistance uh, from this aluminum surface to the end of the lead here. Um, and that's probably okay. What's not okay is copper and aluminum just sandwiched together like that and not protected from air are going to, well, even if you seal it from air, I presume, their electrolysis will occur, and that will begin to corrode the um, copper and aluminum, raising that resistance until uh, some point, I presume, in the not too distant future, this will no longer be the shield will no longer be connected to ground because there will be so much corrosion inside here. So as I mentioned before, this one is soldered on. And what I'm going to do is clean this up as best I can. I'm going to cut a strip that same width out of this and use some contact cement and roll that up. At least that's soldered, that's bonded in some fashion. Uh, looks like solder to me. Um, so this wire is soldered to this, I presume, tin foil, and uh, that that will give a longer, longer uh, lasting shield um, than my approach will. So I'll do that right now. 
Right, I have the um, original foil. I glued a s slight tab of it onto the uh, used contact cement to glue the edge of the foil and a tab of, of the uh, capacitor itself uh, together to start the roll. Then uh, rolled it up after 15 minutes this far and then applied some more contact cement on both surfaces here to hopefully hold it in place so I should be able to just roll it shut and it should stick like that yeah good good now let's see if we get a different uh, DC resistance measurement <coughs> It should be zero. Oop. I can stop sliding off of it. Yeah, zero. It's not point four. Yeah, it is point point one. Okay. Well, it's as good as I'm going to do. Um, what I'll do is slide a bit of. heat shrink over this end not that much but just enough to keep it from shorting out should the ground from shorting out this this side of the cap I'll put it back in um, one other thing I wanted to talk about was what the um, shielded capacitor looks like in the schematic here's the AT8 discriminator um, and first audio amplifier and right here is our capacitor. So it's a C27.01 value, and it has a dotted line around it. Uh, and uh, that dotted line is connected to chassis ground right there. So this indicates it's in a box. It's in a shield, and it's shielded to ground. And it is coming right off. This is the... Um, The grid, yeah. This is the after after the output. Um, let's see, do I want to say this? I haven't traced this out yet. Well, I know it's the output of the tone control section, which is right here. Um, the volume control is connected across the tone control. The signal is is passed. Um, through the shielded capacitor into the grid of the uh, into the grid of the uh, first audio amplifier that's in this tube, and then it get, gets so amplified big time by the six v six. Anyway, that's what it looks like. And there, <coughs> there we have our uh, shielded cap back in place. Center tap of the volume pot, ground here, uh, shield on. And going to the um, uh, the um, 6T8 right here. So I have one more cap to do right under here, and then a few more resistors to check and to replace this can dome. And that's kind of it for oh well, well I forgot the big two. The big two are uh, two power. Uh, capacitors, power filtering caps here and here. Um, two in each can, I think. Those all, all have to be stuff. But for the rest of the chassis, once I get those guys restuffed and this replaced, re resistor replaced, and that cap replaced, I should be able to take some resistance measurements and then some voltage, uh, bring up the power slowly, and we'll see what happens. But that's for next time. Till then, I'll uh, talk to you later. Oh, and I've got a video coming up pretty quickly here on how the FM side of this radio works. We'll follow its signal path as well. So, until next time, take care.